Okay guys, what's up? Okay, so today I'm coming back to you with another critter tutorial um, and it's a little bit of a tutorial on um, some other softwares as well. Um, so the techniques that you can learn in this um, sort of small tutorial can take across to Photoshop somewhat using the, um, the smart object um, facility within Photoshop and um, if you don't understand what that's all about then you can watch this video and, and, and get an idea of exactly what it is that um, that smart object is doing and the differences between Critter and Photoshop will become a bit more um, apparent as we go through the video. So um, the three techniques I want to uh, talk to you about are copy, paste and clone. Okay. So what does that mean? So when, when we take a, a copy of an object, what we're doing is, is we're taking um, a reference of what that object looked like at that point. So if we were to take a photograph of something, technically we're taking a, a copy of that image that our, our eyes see. So when we paste that um, onto the piece of paper or we print that out, that, that's pasting that single um, instance. When we look at that pasted instance, if that ball is no longer where that um, photograph was taken or that object was no longer in shot of where that photograph is taken now and maybe you've moved the object to a different location, the photograph doesn't change. It's a single instance. It's, a, it's a, the exact same point in time from when you last took that copy. So well, what does a clone do, especially within Critter or Smart Object within um, Photoshop? Well, a clone looks at the way it, the original image is and the way you've currently got the um, instance of that clone. So you can edit an instance or you can change values on an instance, which is a clone of the first position. Um, and, and make that look different without editing the original um, item itself. That sounds very complicated, I know. But I hope we have made a bit of a demonstration to make it a little bit easier for you. So what I want to be able to draw is I want to be able to draw a house. Now, we all know how to draw a house. It kind of looks like this. Ta-da! My version of a house. Not very good. I know. Don't worry. This is a sketch layer. So this is going to tell me exactly, you know, kind of what I want to make. And now I'm going to go ahead and make this more um, detailed. Um, so to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, oh, well, I'll, uh, I want to draw how this window looks down here on, the, on this left-hand side. I'm going to pull up a new layer and I'm going to draw out the window and I'm going to make it look something like this. So now I've got this window layer. Now, obviously, it's too big to go in here. It was too awkward to come and zoom in here and with these large brush sizes, go ahead and make all these nice fine detailed lines that I wanted to make um, so I was able to do it larger and come back down to here now I could go ahead and take a copy of this and you know shrink it and place it into position but say I decided oh uh, oh I don't like the green color and I want a different I want a different color or I want to add some detail to, to these windows maybe I want to add a sensor window where I didn't want one before um, then I have to go and you know, change that, and I'm going to have to go and recopy and paste that image back into all these positions. And I don't really want to do that. I'm I'm pretty lazy. Um, so I'm going to use a technique called cloning. Okay, and what cloning is going to allow me to do is it's going to allow me to say, okay, I want one copy of that, but I want it over here. So what it does is it says to the computer, okay, well what we want is we want a copy of this, and we want it placed right here. Okay, so why would we do that? If I come in here and you'll see the fact that I place a filter mask on it. If I take that filter mask off, you're going to see I'm going to change the original window. Okay, so the original window is brown. That's all word C intends to be. So you can see I sketched it out in brown. So now if I go to the instance of a layer, I can go ahead and place in a new filter mask, which is going to change the color of that layer. So here we go. Here's the original clone, and now I've placed an instance value on it. I changed the clone by adding a value. In this case, it's a mask, which is going to change the color. I don't change the color to blue, but it didn't affect the clone. However, if I do go back into this clone and I say, okay, well, in this clone here, I want to add the, uh, the center window in um, in order to make my drawing more detailed. I'm just trying to find this. Okay, so we can see here that I haven't, I'm not going to touch this drawing, right? I'm going to go over here, I'm going to go to my original window that I created, okay? Come back over to this window sketch right here, so you can come back into the sketch because I've labeled the layer, okay? I'm going to grab my um, pipette tool, I'm going to grab my color, 
because I've closed the document down since and I've lost my colour. But yep, yeah, I'll grab that colour. Okay, and I, I'm quickly just going to grab the line tool for the sake of speed. Come back in here, I believe it was around 12. Oh, a bit thick that uh, 8 pixels may build it. Okay, so either way, I'm going to quickly throw in um, some annotation to this. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to go here. I'm going to add um, a little bit of a center window to it by doing that. Um, doing that. Now I've just gone ahead, go ahead and uh, put a distressing layer on this to make this look this way. Um, so I could, unfortunately, I didn't place that on a filter mask, so I now have to go back in and. Um, re-edited this bit. So there's, there's um, one reason why you would use this method. Okay, so I've added that to that layer, but if we look down here, we've added it here too. And it's already coated in blue, but hang on, we painted it in, in green. And that's because we've applied a filter to the instance of the clone, okay? So remember when we said that um, a copy and paste, that's not gonna make any difference. That's always gonna remain an exact copy of what that was in the original place. But in the when we had an instance of it, uh, so when we had a clone of it, that is a direct um, copy, a dynamically updatable copy. That basically means that whenever I make an edit to this, it's going to make an edit to this wherever I placed it. Now, if we go ahead and try to um, set the the value of this when we've made a clone, it's going to automatically update that clone. So we don't want to do that. But anything that we want to do, we need to do in a in a mask format. So let me show you what that means. So if I was to take another copy of this window sketch, and I'm going to go Control V, and now I've got another clone copy. So I've got a clone copy right here. Now, if your shortcut isn't set up, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to go to Settings, Configure Critter. You're going to come down to Keyboard Shortcuts, Layers, and then you're going to come down here to Clone Layer. So remember, you're going to settings, figure critter, keyboard shortcuts. You're going to look in the critter section, layers, and then all the way down to clone layer. If it says not, if it doesn't say anything here, it's a blank box like this. So you're just going to left click in it, and you're going to click at the bottom where it says none. So you're going to click down here, and then you're just going to press Control, Shift, and V at the same time. And that way, you're going to be paired with me. And then anytime I say that command, you know we're going to be using this feature. And it's called clone layer. I'm going to say OK to that. So now we've got our clone layer, what can we do with it? Well, you know, we want to position it somewhere else. We need another window. So, OK, well, we can go in here. Um, let me just find which layer this is. OK. So I don't need all these other layers. Let's just show you something very shortly. OK, so if I turn this back on, now you can see where the outline of my actual house is, where I made it nice and neat from the sketch we had before. OK, so. What we've got here is we've got the, the space at which we want the window. We've got another clone now sat up here, which is layer 18 right here. OK, we're going to place this into a quick group. So now it's within a group within itself, just to make it easier for us to manage it. OK, we're going to then right click again this. We're going to say add. We're going to say a transform mask. OK, wait, I'm going to just complete operation. That's not a problem. OK, we're going to grab our transform tool. And then we're going to go ahead and move it, making sure we've got the transform mask selected. Because we don't want to edit our clone in any way, shape or form, because that's going to change how things look. If we make any editations, that's going to, um, that's going to change the output of the image. And we don't want to do that. We want to make sure that it all stays the same. So remember, we've got a filter mask on this one to turn it blue, but we haven't got it on this one. That's why this one is still green. So, OK, we're going to position this. Um, around about here. Now you could end up drawing two separate windows here, but for this example I'm using the same one. And I'm using the same one so we can see uh, the demonstration of what it actually does. Okay, so now I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to say, okay, well that's in position, that's where I want it to be. And we've got it there. So if we copied and pasted this, remember, we would have had to um, go back and re-edit that center. Now if we decide, oh well, I don't want that center. That center looks really bad. Um, I, you know, I don't want it. Well, okay. Well, in the clone version, what I can now do is I can go back to here, go back to my brush, select my eraser. Oh, select my eraser brush. Sorry about the dog. <laughs> and go ahead and delete 
all this information here. Could probably do a better job of this. But we're just going to quickly get rid of it just for our demonstration. So, okay, so now we've got rid of it. Okay, and it was that easy. It's gotten rid of it after these two, too. All at the same time, and we've applied all the different colors. So this it could be a logo for a company and you want to you want to um you want to put clouds on it in one instance and you want to put something else on it in another instance and you just want to make them visible or invisible or maybe you want to animate it or maybe you're repairing a photograph and you're looking to do a certain um section rebuild and you want to be able to toggle on and off what you're doing but this is allows you to do that um extensions of these features um also allow us to apply um, textures, paints, or um, these kind of things to it using the same method. So if I use um, the exact same method by painting the base of the house in a certain particular color, it doesn't really matter the color at the moment because all that's going to do is that's going to act as an anchor for everything we do later. So we're going to paste the area that we want um, this new thing to happen. And then what we're going to do is we're going to select um, something we want uh, that area to look like. So in this case, I've picked this. Um, this wood effect right here <clears throat> and I want my house to look wooden so what I've then done is I've then taken um, copies of the instance of that layer or sorry yeah, copies of this layer and made an instance of them and placed a transform on these layers to be in the position that I want to be in so in this layer I've come up here and I've positioned it and I've put it down like this and I made it look like it was um, you know, coming up, coming up at an angle at the top of the house. I've then done the same thing with the other side of the house. And then I've done the base flat bit of the house. So very quickly, I've managed to make it um, look a particular way. And that's, that's all well and good. I like this. This is not a problem. I can see what I've done. Everything looks really good. And that isn't an issue. Um, however, I decide, oh, well, actually, hmm... That wood isn't that great. Uh, with a copy and paste method, I would have to go in and I would have to edit every single piece of wood. Every time I put a piece of wood down, I'd have to go rebuild that image, or I'd have to play an effect on that image, or, or do some sort of thing. With with Crystal, we can do this dynamically. We can do it with a filter mask. So as you can see, this filter mask here, all I've done, sorry about the dog, <laughs> is adjusted the the hue in a filter. I've gone, gone right clicked. And I've gone add and I've gone filter mask. Okay. And I've just selected the HSV adjustment. I'm gonna kinda of cancel this one. Um but you say okay and you're gonna end up with a new filter mask right here. I'm just gonna hide one of these because I've got two. Um and then what we're gonna do right click on that, we're gonna say properties. Okay, so we've got um hue and saturation values here. So we can now begin to dynamically change this wood colour. We can change the entire thing. So now imagine we had the whole house printed. You know, we've put all the windows the way we wanted them, and we've done everything that we need to do. We can we can begin to edit um, large amounts of things. So this could be skin texture that you placed on a you know on a broken um, picture. This could be flowers in the background. Um, if you were doing um, any anime drawings or any sort of artistic drawings, you could dynamically assign the colors to daisies in a field all at once using this method. Um, or maybe you could, um, you know, place multiple flowers in a field, um, or you could uh, multiple grasses, and you could draw that grass everywhere you want. So the difference between using this type of technique and a brush type of technique being the fact that when you, um, when you have the individual layers, when you've laid the brushes down, and you've, and you've got how everything you want to look, if you want to edit that in any way, shape, or form, you've got to edit it in, in such a unique or um, uniform way. Whereas this way, you have the ability to edit several layers and several chunks at once and um, adjust how they work together and um, adjust them all in a, in a unified way. So you don't have to keep going back in and out, in and out, in and out. But also allows you, once you've got the um, the clone set, if I if I wanted the two roof pieces to be slightly different to the rest of it, then that's okay. I can go straight back to where um, my roof transform mask is here. I can go right click, I can go add, I can go um, filter mask right here. 
and I can go ahead and change it again. So, you know, I can say, okay, well, you know, I want the, the top bit to be more blue, and then I can copy and paste these settings straight over to the other mount as well. So if I remember it's minus one, three, four on the top, and then the other two are the same. If I come down here to, to this one, and I say, okay, well, this one, I need to add a filter mask. Once Critter crashes up with me today, and seems to be running extremely fast. Okay, so remember this was minus one, three, four. So I put exactly the same value on it, and I'm going to end up with exactly the same value here. Now this is um, affecting this twice over because of something called the transparency mask. I'll forget rid of that transparency mask. You'll see here that this is being double affected by the other layers um, effect. So to, to, do, to get rid of that, you would make it inherent inherent to the um, to the actual alpha itself, and then that, that gets rid of the technique. So enter back to the color we changed it to. Okay. So unfortunately, I think Chris is going to crash on me now because I've done too much. So I'm going to wrap up the video there, and you can see um, ex exactly what this uh, technique. You could, you could do with this technique um, adding um, multiple layers um, to it for um, deletion of this, the extra bit here you could add um, transparency masks um, which cut the uh, the image down like this okay so you can see the fact that it cuts that bit off the image and you can do that just by painting on black I will make a video on um, how to uh, use transform and transparency layers um, individually but yeah I hope that helped and uh, thanks for joining me Bye-bye.